Welcome to episode 32 of the Hunt by Country podcast, presented by Exo Mountain Gear. This week, we're talking with the good folks from Onyx Maps with the Hunting GPS Maps products. You guys might be familiar with them, might use them in your Garmin GPS, on your smartphone, or maybe in Google Earth. We talked to them today about all the products, including a bunch of new technology that's absolutely exciting. Whether you're new to the platform and want to know what hunting GPS maps are, or you're a current user and want to know what's the latest and greatest, you're certainly going to get something out of this episode that's not only going to help you prepare for the next season, but also be a more informed hunter while you're out in the field. Hope you guys enjoy this one. The Hunt Back Country Podcast is proudly brought to you by XO Mountain Gear, makers of ultralight, ultra tough packs that are designed to do what you love most, hunt the backcountry. XO packs are designed for efficiency, simplicity, and durability that's backed by a lifetime warranty. To learn more about XO Mountain Gear, please visit www.xomountaingear.com. All right, well, here we are on this episode with some of the crew from the Onyx Maps folks, um, Ed and Yana. How are you guys doing today? Doing, doing great. good, thank you. Good, well, thanks for joining us. Um, just to get started with some context for the listeners, if we could just do kind of a quick intro and maybe a little bit of a background. Yana, you actually work for Onyx Maps, is that right? Yeah, I work for Onyx Maps full time. I was um, first their website designer and then their creative director, and now I'm their marketing director. So pretty busy, company's growing big, and I love our product, so that's why I'm here. Yeah, that's awesome to hear. And Ed, how are you affiliated? Well, for the last three years, I've been pro staff with them, you know, helping them do trade shows and social media type stuff. And about a month ago, I became the pro staff coordinator. Oh, um, awesome. So I don't work directly with on Maps. I'm actually from the Milwaukee, Wisconsin area. Um, but I helped them out quite a bit on the back end. Yeah, that's neat. Very cool. Big help, actually. <laughs> And you're both big time hunters, of course, not just working for Onyx Maps, but you're both out there in the field putting the products to use. Um, yeah, and I know that you're you're pretty much into traditional archery, is that right? That's right. I was uh, born into it. My dad and mom, that's how they make a living. So I was pretty much born with a bow in my hands. I've been shooting since I was five. And so do they, out they make a living, do they build bows or how do they? Yep. Yeah, they make a living making traditional archery bows um the name of the company is robertson stick bow and my dad's been doing that for what 38 years wow so, that is awesome yeah yeah so you literally did grow up with it <laughs> yeah i've been in this industry a very long time yeah that's awesome yeah. very cool yeah. and ed i know you kind of hunt a little bit of anything and everything you can get after is that right i do you know what Primarily Wisconsin, but I come out west quite often to chase elk, mule deer, uh, antelope, whatever it is. But yeah, yeah primarily primarily Midwest with uh, whitetail, um, upland bird, turkey, waterfall. Yeah, very cool. Well, let's get the conversation rolling. We're certainly going to get into some of the kind of tips and tactics and um, ideas for how we can integrate the Onyx Maps products into our hunting and our scouting and things like that. But Let's first take a big picture look at what does Onyx Maps have to offer for the hunter. Um, if you could speak to that a little bit um, in terms of the big picture, Yana, it would be awesome. Onyx Maps has a mapping system that works on your Garmin GPS. We have a chip you can plug into there and get going. We have a hunt app for your tablet or mobile phone. We also have a computer product called Planet. It's a really good scouting tool that works with your GPS and or your mobile phone device. So kind of hitting all the different platforms we can to get our maps on there. So no matter what type of hunter you are, you have the data you need right at your fingertips to to get out there and make it happen. So the Planet product you mentioned, is that something that's on the way? Um, what What can you say about that? I actually haven't heard about that. So you can use the map on your web browser, and then, for example, if your smartphone has the ability to get on a browser like a Windows phone does, you can also use the map on there, because we don't offer the Hunt app on a Windows platform. So it's pretty much anywhere you go, you'd be able to access the maps and the data from a website, from your phone, from anywhere. So that's what Planet's all about. It's going to be very, very similar to the app. It's just you're going to be able to 
use it with your high speed internet. You can drop your waypoints on there and sync them to your tablet. Um, same with your chip. It's like it's still a very new product, and I I haven't even got to take a really big deep dive into it. But we'll be launching it fairly soon here, and That's it's going to cool. make some people happy that really really like the Google Earth product. Yeah, so, I've used the Google yeah. Earth product quite a bit, and I've actually just personally been excited really with seeing the mobile app and how that's developed and thinking this mobile app is, you know, adding more functionality than even the Google Earth product. So it sounds like the planet's going to kind of connect that and bring oh, yeah. that increased functionality to, to the desktop for sure. Oh, yeah, definitely. It'll also uh, sync your tracks too, so you can see what tracking data you did while using your phone and put it up on your computer screen and get a bigger picture of it. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, especially yeah. in the off season. I mean, the app is obviously great for when you're in the field, but you don't actually want to go back and look at all of your data or prepare all of your data when you're in the comfort of your home by staring at a small screen. <laughs> right, right. So you mentioned um, the chip product as well. We kind of glossed over that but so for folks who have a handheld gps unit like a garmin what is the chip product so the chip comes loaded with the same mapping data that you would get in the app the only difference is the the interactivity is a little bit different and then your base maps are definitely different and the reason being is actually gps technology is a lot older than our smartphones and stuff and so the gps is the best way to go about doing it if you're going to be out in the back country for many 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 days or weeks and you don't want to bring along your solar charger or any way to charge your phone but with that you also have to think about your batteries and i'm getting way off course here sorry no, you're guys. good that's all <laughs> that's all valid but, for sure yeah so um so the chip is it's pretty easy because it's just like a little plug and play so you can get the chip you take your batteries out of the back of your Garmin, you put that chip in that little SD slot there, plug your batteries back in, turn it on, and map overlays where you're at, and you're good to go. Um, each chip is statewide map data, so of course we have it for hunting Montana and a bunch of different states, And where, whereas in the app we have the map data available for all 50 states. And the reason being is that the app data, like I said, is a little newer technology, so we can streamline it a lot faster. Yeah. But we are going to get to all 50 states in the chip as well. So yeah. no matter where you're hunting, we'll have a map for you. Yeah, that's <laughs> very cool. So I'm curious, does the does the app, now that that's kind of being developed and advancing, is that outpacing from a sales perspective, what you guys are seeing in terms of customers um, versus the chip? Yeah, definitely. Our app sales are, are pretty much growing exponentially, whereas the chip product is, I wouldn't call it flatlined. It's still growing, but it's not growing as definitely as fast as the app product because, of course, that's a higher price item and you have to have a Garmin GPS in order for it to work. And not everyone has a Garmin GPS, but everybody has a smartphone nowadays. So. Yeah. yeah. I mean, what you mentioned about power is definitely a, a factor. I mean, personally, um, my, me and my elk hunting partner, we were going on a seven day hunt at Colorado in the back country. We were going to be, you know, five, six miles deep and packing everything we needed for the week. And he, we basically did an experiment last year like he took just his phone and he had a um, small battery pack slash solar charger to recharge if need be and he was using that for all of the navigation and everything i had a handheld garmin with the hunting gps uh, maps chip in that and it was interesting to see i mean keeping the phone on um, airplane mode except for the location services that you need and then obviously being somewhat conscious of a attempting to conserve battery. I mean, it, we got through multiple days before we needed to touch the um, battery pack and really was able to make it through a week pretty much with only one recharge. So even oh, for you guys who are, you know, maybe have those questions about the viability of um, an extended hunt and using a mobile phone with the Onyx maps. I mean, I was kind of the skeptic last year, but, now, after kind of bringing my standalone GPS, I'm more 
leaning towards bringing my phone as well. It's it's pretty amazing. It definitely is, and yeah, if you have that ability to plug into a solar charger, you're you're good to go to for who knows how long, right? So, yeah. And, and like you said, putting your phone in airplane mode is that's the key right there, and then you're not trying to pay, ping um, cell phone towers or trying to get your Wi-Fi data. You're you're off the grid. So. Yeah. Yeah, that's what that's what a lot of people don't understand because I get questions about that a lot. Well, my felt cell phone's going to die out in the field. Well, if you don't constantly check it every ten minutes and put it in airplane mode and just have the GPS functionality on, it will last a while. But you know, like you said, carry a solar charger or a battery pack just in case. Yeah, for sure. So, I have found that the solar charger is actually a lot lighter than a whole bunch of batteries. Yeah, even I mean, if you're batteries using just the in lithium batteries. Are heavy. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, for sure. so this is, you know, being positioned to work for your, that backcountry hunter. It's just knowing those key little tools to make it last longer and take it one step further. And one of those tools is being able to save your maps for offline. That's something that our app does. And so you can just turn all the layers on the map and find the area that you're going to be going hunting in and you just save those map tiles right to your phone, and then once you're out of service, they'll load automatically for you. Or you can then, of course, put your app setting and your phone settings into airplane mode and use save map mode. And like I said, they're just going to pop up automatically for you. Yeah. And then, like, if your map data or your map view is too cluttered, you can always take a layer off. For example, maybe you're just hunting public lands and and want to know where your wilderness boundary is, right? You can turn off the possible access or your block management areas or your transportation layers or even your historic wildfire layers if you don't need them. Or if you do, you can turn them right back on all while you're out in the field. And being having that interactivity when you're out there just, I found, made a big difference in my hunting and my backcountry hunting style more than anything. Yeah. So... I'm familiar with the product and you just mentioned some of my favorite aspects of it, which are all these different layers. Um, Ed, for those who are new to the product, can you kind of explain this concept of layers um, and what the different layers are within a product and how they work together? Well, you know, to hit, you can turn on and off to different layers, like game manager unit boundary layers. You know, there's people that come out west from out east that, that apply for and get a coveted premium tag and they have to stay in a certain unit. So it shows those boundaries. Like Yana said, historic fire data. Um, you can turn off the public land or the private land. You know, you can basically customize the map to show any data you want or don't want. I mean, I think with the Hunt 3.0, they launched a lot of different layers to go along with that to give you additional information. There's even weather information on there now. Yeah. Um, if I could piggyback on that a little bit, a new layer you can find in the Hunt app right now, which will be communicating quite frequently here in the upcoming weeks, is this Boone and Crockett trophy data and those stats. And you can figure out how many people have harvested a Boone and Crockett trophy area within a county. So if you're scouting or wanting to hunt a specific area, you can see what kind of trophy data is out there and then turn that layer on and work that with those hunting districts like you said there and apply for that tag wow so I, that's a unit by unit that it breaks it up unit by unit or county by county how exactly does that work do you know it first it breaks it up by species and then it breaks it up by county and it shows up kind of like okay. a heat map so the darker the red color uh. the more the more um, trophy animals were taken there versus the lighter color of blue, then not as many, or they'll be clear, which would be none. So. Yeah. Interesting. And then of Actually, course you can always identify that layer and it will bring up that information that you're looking for. So like the County name and the species and, and how many people I had applied or excuse me, how many people have drawn there. Very cool. Yeah, I played with that a little bit when it launched just the other day, looking at my home state of Wisconsin and seeing where all the trophy deer are killed. It's, it is just like Yana said, it's a heat layer. So the darker areas have more trophies and it's, it's pretty neat. I mean, it's, it's public information you can get from Boone and Crockett, but now you have it in an easier format to look at. Yeah. I mean, that, that point right there about 
public information and now it's just easier. I mean, that's one thing I've noticed um, just in general in the value of the product of Onyx Maps is a lot of the information that is in the app, for example, it's public information. You can get out there and find it. You can find fire data. You can find weather data. You can find Boone and Crockett data. You can find trails. You can find all these things. But what I've found from, say, my pre-Onyx Maps days, if you will, is you have to go to a million different places to get all this data, and then it's incredibly difficult to bring it all together. And so really that's the value that I see in terms of um, the feature, core feature of the product is you guys bring so much data in and just put it in one place where it's so easy to find. And then as you mentioned, to even turn things on and off and just bring it all together. I mean, that's, it's it's saved me so much time for sure. Yeah, we have a whole GIS team and a engineering development team all working in tandem with each other to bring all these layers together and feed them from different servers. And, and what they do is just magic sometimes. It's just really cool to see it all coming together and happening at such a fast pace. Yeah. So one more question real quick on that trophy data. Is that only Boone and Crockett or does that include any Pope and Young data as well? Do you know? Right now it's just Boone and Crockett um, okay. partnership that Eric, our founder, had collaborated with those guys on, and um, hopefully that'll open up some more avenues so we can bring more data to our users. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. So let's talk um, a little bit more. Um, we mentioned a few key things. We kind of understand the concept of layers now and turning those on and off. Um, you mentioned that in the app you can take things offline, so clearly if you're out there in the back country and don't have a signal... It's not that you need to pull in any data for the app over your cell signal or over Wi-Fi. It can all be downloaded. Um, a few of the other things, and one of um, the improvements I noticed that was new in this 3.0 version of the app was uh, more and better trail data. Can you talk about that a little bit? Sure can. We brought on some pretty amazing GIS gurus. Adam Potts leads our trails and roads data team. And ever since we hired him, it's just been night and day difference. And he is very picky about getting those points right. So it's really good to see. But yeah, we've got, I can't even tell you how many millions of miles of trails and data and road data we have and the different types of roads. But if you do pull up the hunt app, we've got them all named, whether it be their common name of Lost Horse Road or a Forest Service road number. You can also identify a road or trail feature and find out what its terrain is like. And I mean, he's just, he's gotten after it. And I know there's at least three GIS people on the team that are contributing to that. And every time we get more data like that, it's really exciting. But yeah. yeah. So does does that include uh, like the length of trails and any of that data? It does on some of it. If we have it available, then when you identify that feature, we're going to tell you how far it is. And then another really cool thing about the hunt app is we have these drawing tools. So you're able to measure distance. So let's say you're taking the trail just to get to maybe the wilderness boundary in the back country. And then you can maybe take a waypoint and place it on the map where you want to veer off the trail and maybe set up your camp. You can use the hunt app to draw that line out to know how far in you're going to be hiking and, and going down. So it's not necessarily just limited to knowing trails or how long a road is or anything like that. You can use the drawing tools to even plot out your food plots if you're in the East, you know? So. <laughs> You know, that's that's something that we have used. You know, as you mentioned, typically what we're doing is we're taking a trail so far, and then we're obviously clearly wanting to get away from the trails, away from the crowds, dive off, go over this ridge, what have you. But it's really helpful to be able to draw those lines and see what distance that is or see what kind of elevation profile that has. And the app being able to do that's uh, incredibly helpful for sure. I, and I guess this goes back to what the, the planet... Um, product that we talked about but so you can for example 
set these waypoints, maybe draw some of these tracks, do some of these calculations on your computer before your trip, before you're in the field, and then those data points that you made, your custom data, can sync to the app so that when you're then in the field on your smartphone, you have that accessible. Is that right? That's correct. It's just it's using that same cloud-based technology that many phone users are used to now. So even if you do it with like Google Maps, you can do that right now. We're just pretty much making that technology and also putting it into our app. Yeah, that's very neat. Yeah. So getting um, away a little bit from the technical aspects of the product, which I'm sure we'll mention more, but. And I'm curious, as someone who, like myself, um, hunts in other states quite a bit, Mm -hmm. how do you use um, the Onyx Maps products, no matter whether that's the app or a chip or the computer-based products, how do you use that specifically when you are planning for an out-of-state hunt? Well, I use it to find trailheads. You know, if you're going in backcountry, find a place to get into the backcountry and you know, I like to look at the aerial views or plug the chip into the computer and try to find water sources, places to camp, um, maybe try to figure out drainages or, or areas that, that animals might be moving through. Yeah, I try to find those those hidden gems in the backcountry that I hope other people don't find. You know, People that don't have this product, they might just be go a mile off the road. Well, I want to go three or four miles off the road, so what does that look like? Where is it going to take me? Um, you know, and and you can also, you know, if you're looking at drawing certain tags, you know, high high quality tags with um, different percentages of drawing. Well, a lot of those places have a lot of the public land is landlocked. Well, how am I going to get back into that land? You know, where is that public land? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's one thing I guess is a huge uh, feature of the product we didn't specifically talk much about yet is um, the whole boundaries and we mentioned the game units but boundaries specifically in identifying public land private land and even for public lands what type of public land it is can you speak a bit to that yana yeah sure can so we have within the app and in the gps chip product uh, public land boundaries and also private land ownership and their property boundaries and our product will ping your GPS location, and of course, then let you know your location relative to those boundaries. So if you have permission to hunt a specific piece of private land, you always know that you're right in that. Or if you're, you know, hunting in public land and you're, you know, getting close to a private land boundary, it tells you where your location is relative to that boundary to make sure you don't trespass. And if, you know, you shoot something and it goes on that private landowner's place, you you can, you know, query the data, find out their name information and give them a call and say, hey, my buck just went over on your side of the fence. Would it be okay if I go and get it? And, you know, private landowners really respect it when you ask for their permission. So, yeah, so it's a really good deal there. So that's wild not only being able to see what land is public and what's private but for those private parcels being able to see ownership data um where applicable i can only imagine that um certainly some hunters are using that data hopefully in a good way to maybe even try and make some leads on getting access to private land oh, yeah. absolutely so, uh, take it away yeah, absolutely. I mean, on on my side of the, the country, um, you know, knocking on doors seems to be a lot easier if you actually know the person's name. You just don't go up and ask for the owner. You're asking, ask, asking for the direct person. Um, you know, so I think it makes it, it helps bridge that gap be- between being annoying and, and actually getting permission to get on the land. Yeah, that's awesome. Right. Another cool thing is you can get their address. So if they do give you permission, you can send them a little thank you note down the way, which I have found has always allowed me to re-go and hunt that private landowner's yeah. place. Yeah. It's like that little thank you. So That's very cool. Ed, something that you touched on um, when we were talking about, you know, identifying new areas and things like that was water. Um 
are there specific layers for water or how does um, Onyx Maps handle a water data? That's a good question. I think we'd have to pass that one to Yana. I, I honestly okay. don't, I don't know where they get that data from. I just know it's there. But it is like it's a layer, right? Like you're not just searching for what looks like water. Onyx Maps will actually, you know, provide some insight to where streams are and things like that. I, I think right. histor historical data where streams are supposed to be. I know when I was in Montana hunting elk last September, you know, there was streams on the map that were not there, but, you know, they were dry, but I'm sure they have water in them at some point. Sure. You know, so it's not that the water's always going to be there, but historical data where water's supposed to be. Right. Right. So um, a lot of different states have different unique layers to them. So, for example, we do have a Montana water layer that does give you that current information and the type of water it is, the name of the drainage, you know, whatever it is you're looking for. And what we suggest if you don't have that layer within your state, because it is all pretty much dependent on your the state's resources, if that information is available, is you can toggle between the different base maps and find it out. For example, there is a base map called, let me bring it up here, uh, Topo and Trails there, and they have a lot of the water bodies names on there as well. So even if that layer isn't even if that layer isn't available to you in your state you can at least use the base maps to find that water data and of course if you combine that with uh, historical fire data sometimes you can find those critters because they're all thirsty yeah for sure so and real quick again just to kind of for the listeners who aren't from the products when we talk about base map um to simplify it you know, if, if you go to Google Maps, for example, you can switch between like street view and, you know, terrain view or earth view or what have you. That's the same concept with base maps and onyx maps, right? Right. It's, it's sort of that foundation layer. Yep. Yep. Okay. The only difference is, is we have over 10 plus base maps and we're adding new ones all the time. So, for example, we have this really cool, it's called a slope heat map. And so instead of looking at your map, in a topography sense, you're looking at your slope heat map, and it's based on color variation. So your higher elevation points are red, and your you know your lower ones are either green or you know your water is always going to be blue. So your lower ones are green, and then it you know goes up to yellow to red. Mm -hmm. So if you don't necessarily know how to read topo, you definitely can read that slope heat map and and work off the satellite imagery as well. Yeah, that's very so, cool. Yeah. So what do you, what are some of the, you know, advantages um, about using the products in the field? I mean, certainly there's, there's the big ones we can think of and even the things we mentioned in terms of maybe pre-marking a few waypoints um, and then clearly the product can be used just for general navigation of like, where the heck am I? How do I get back to yeah. camp? But what are what are some of the other ways that the products is, can actually be useful in the field um, to hunters? All right. So one <laughs> of the the benefits to the map in the field, um, other than obviously having all this information right at your fingertips, is finding new access with all the different roads and trails and information. Is also you are able to drop waypoints. So for me, as a traditional bow hunter, you know I I got in arrow through a critter, well, I'm going to have to go blood trail it. So I can put waypoints that suggest, oh, I found blood here and then, you know, go a little ways and, oh, I found blood here, mark the waypoint, go a little ways and, oh, there's my bloody arrow. Oh, it went all the way through the lungs. I mean, that means I'm going to find my critter really soon, you know? So it kind of gives you that peace of mind too. If you get lost within that blood trail, you can always go back to where your waypoints are. And since the apps always know in your location, you can go back to where that last bloody arrow point was, or, you know, the blood you found on the, the ground. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just one way you could leverage I, the waypoint feature while you're in the field. Yeah. Um, I, I like to use it in the field as, you know, so you do scouting from home. But sometimes when you get out in the field, everything is different than what you think. Yeah, for sure. And so it's nice to have the tool to actually scout while you're in the field. So again, this past September in Montana, uh, you know, we used it, the aerial view and aerial topography view, to kind of figure out how we're going to get to a different place. 
you know, looking for a different place to camp, a different place to hunt. You know, a flat base map like on the handheld, you can't really see what what the um, topography is necessarily or what the kind of obstructions you have or the satellite view. You see exactly, okay, that that's a mountaintop or a, a ridge I can't get over. How do I get around it? How do I get there? Right. Yeah, that was definitely one thing I noticed side by side last year when I had uh, the Garmin unit with a chip and had a topo map. But as you mentioned, you can't really see land cover like you can with a satellite. Um, so you can see, yeah, there's an incline here, but you can't see is it open, is it covered, is it rocky, is it thick? I mean, that's a, a big advantage in the field, especially when you're new to an area. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Right. Pinpointing those feeding and bedding areas as well, especially if you're looking for some elk. Right. And, uh, I personally was always a proponent, a big proponent of the chip and the handheld, just because it was reliable and always worked, had great data. Uh, but, you know, in September last year, I really became more uh, more of a user of the of the mobile app. I, mean, I think they work well together. Mm-hmm. Um, but having that aerial view and all the different base layers was definitely very nice to have versus just that flat static, you know, white map on handheld. So we mentioned, um, you know, creating waypoints in the field and marking, uh, spots very specifically such as, you know, found blood here and you're tracking blood along the way. But is there a tracking feature where you can kind of turn tracking on, set it, forget it, and it will just track your, um, hike, if you will, and drop a point every X amount of time or distance and show the full path? So yeah, that's a that's a new feature in the Hunt 3.0 app. Um, you know, the old version would always a little dot would follow you in the field, but it wouldn't leave the breadcrumb trail. You'd have to actually plot points on it. Now you can turn that tracking on and off so that it leaves that breadcrumb trail like a, a handheld GPS does. Okay. Yeah, that's very cool. You can also know your time spent and your average speed and stuff. So if you've got to figure out a way to get back to camp before dark you can kind of figure out how to get back there and how long it's going to take you to get back there keep yourself safe while out in the woods that's awesome yeah well we've covered a bunch of them hopefully have um dropped some helpful info and i'm sure maybe um spark some questions from listeners as well what's kind of the best way if if users have questions at this point or want to learn more that they can kind of check things out or learn more about the product or maybe even um, ask a specific question. All right. So I, I think the first thing that they could do is, you know, if they're not a user or, or a customer of the company, they can actually download the mobile application on, you know, from Google Play Store or iTunes and actually get a seven day free trial for any state they want so they can play with it and see how it works. Oh, really? Yep. That's awesome. Yes, amazing. Then, of course, you can always reach out to us on uh, social media. We've got a great social media coordinator, Zach. He'll answer any questions that you have. Um, you know, our customer service team is amazing. They have really good response time, and they really care about helping. And, um, man, if anything, just get on our website and poke around and see what information you might be able to find. Yeah, I've noticed that there's definitely some helpful videos and tutorials as well. Just as a definitely. as a customer myself, I've had questions, and the videos are extremely helpful. Um, That's actually really good to know. <laughs> <laughs> the, those social media profiles, or is it pretty much just Onyx Maps on most um, platforms in terms of like Instagram, Twitter, et cetera? It's actually Team Hunt, if you want to get specific with our... Yep, our hunt mapping application. You've, we, of course, have Onyx Maps on social as well. But if you want to okay. speak to a hunter and talk hunting, we highly suggest you get on Team Hunt or even look for hunting GPS maps and you'll find us. Okay, perfect. Well, thank you so much. Is there anything else that you guys wanted to add today? No, I'm oh, just try out like the hunt think. app and happy hunting. Yeah, thanks for the time. Thank you so much for tuning in, guys. Be sure to check back next week for a brand new episode. Love to hear your feedback. Please consider leaving us a review in iTunes or email us your questions or comments to podcast at exomountaingear.com.